Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Rodney J. Brown, the Chief of Administrative Services for Team Suffolk. Today, I will be reading Renee Watson's Ways to Make Sunshine. My chapter is Chapter 4, New Beginnings. This is, new house is not new at all. The front yard has not that green grass. Like no one ever took care of it, and the screen door creaks every time it's open. The not-so-soft carpet is tan and bland like food with no seasoning. The bedrooms are tiny and everything looks like everyone used it before. When mom shows me my bedroom, she says, see, something good came out of moving. She smiles, but I don't. I just go to my room, sit on the bed, and look out the window. There's a tree in the yard next door that is leaning over toward our house. The branches are reaching out, scratching my window. This house is not new at all. Everything is on the floor. No stairs to climb like our old house. Ray and I like to slide down the stairs, bumping up and down like we're sledding a snowy hill. Going up, we we'll see how many steps we could skip at a time. He always won because his legs are longer than mine. But here, there is only a narrow hallway with a ceiling light that doesn't shine bright. This house is not new at all. The kitchen is too small for us to eat as a family. It's not even as big as my to fit my sous chef table. The one mom bought me, I could help her cook alongside her in the kitchen. It's just a small plastic table, tall enough for me to stand at without having to reach too high. Mom says I'll make a good chef one day because I'm always experimenting and thinking up unique concoctions. I don't know what concoctions meant. So mom made me look up in the dictionary and I figured out what she was saying. I'm good at mixing and inventing and putting foods together that may not normally go together, but turn out so yummy and delicious. Sometimes I'll favorite. I'm not old enough to cook by myself yet, but mom lets me help her. When I was younger, I had a pretend kitchen set right next to our kitchen and I played along as mom made real dinner. Mom would act with me, make believing she was tasting my concoctions. As soon as I was old enough to replace the fake kitchen set with a small table so I could help with the measuring and cutting. Ray never helps in the kitchen. And when I used to play cook, he never pretend to eat my concoctions. He only likes it when I have something real to feed him. Like when mom make baked brownies with her using a real, the real oven. We tried out one of my recipes like lemon brownies. Ray thought lemons and chocolate were not going to taste good together. But when he went back for seconds, I knew I had proved him wrong. Mom thinks one day that I'll be a food critic. I don't even know what that, I did not know that was an actual job. To taste food and say if you like it or not. But I bet it's the coolest job to have. Sipping and tasting all day. Telling people, yes, it is this or no to that. Would my belly ache after eating so much food? I asked mom, how am I going to cook with you without my sous chef table? Well, we have to find another way. She walks out of the kitchen and heads down the dark, long hallway. I look around the house and see the chairs that are for the dining room table. I take out one and set it at the kitchen counter right next to the stove. I get on the chair, sitting on my knees. The chair wobbles, and I realize that I'm not as comfortable as standing. I carry the chair back to the dining room and keep looking. Ryan, you need to help unpack. You can't just stand around. Dad says he's carrying empty boxes into the dining room. Please get the broom out of the closet and sweep the kitchen. Well, we've been busy all day getting the house set up and unpacking. Everything has to be perfect because grandmother and her friend, Mr. Simmons, will be coming over for Easter dinner. Aunt Rose and Uncle David, too. We always have family dinners at our house, but that was because our house was the biggest. Even with moving, Mom insisted that we keep the tradition. I guess there are some things she doesn't want to let go of either. I open the closet and take out the broom. I know Dad said to sweep, but before I do that, I take 
out the step stool and find I find folded in the back of the closet. I open it and stand it at the kitchen counter, right next to the stove. It's perfect. I will be able to cook with mom and reach everything just fine. We cut and dice and measure together just like we always do. I think tonight we might we should cook one of our favorite dishes like we used to at our old house. But then I decided that since this is our first night here, I should try out the recipe we haven't had before. Something in this place should actually be new. Stay tuned for chapter five.